Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I've well. entered full screen space, so I can now. Maybe I should fucking record it too. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Do it. I love it. <laughs> it's for me just Here's to one. take up all, just to take up all my hard drive space. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Uh, do you want to say congratulations on the Australian premiere of Zero Is One, 10 years later? I know, right? Yep. It's finally happened. Uh, do, you, do you have a thing to <laughs> say? Okay, I'm not going to record. You're recording it, so it's fine. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah, we'll send it to you. Okay, yeah, yeah. Send it to me, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, thanks. Yeah, no, I'm excited for people to see it, you know? Like, uh, everyone worked really hard on it. Like, I, we had... Definitely in post, over like 40 people volunteered. And we spent over two and a half years working on post. So obviously the dream, the goal is that people see it. It didn't exactly like blow up or anything like that when we, when we put it out. So it's nice to, uh, you know, just have an audience. And I'm, I'm curious to see what people will think. You let me know. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, it's kind of really interesting because I feel like if the film had come out now, it probably would have had a bit of a cult following and sort of blown off in a way. Hey, yeah, get the country. Sorry, sitting on a staircase. <laughs> High point stuff. Come on in. Um, <laughs> and yeah. Who knows? It's, like, it's hard to tell. Yeah, with the streaming platform and everything up there now, I just feel like it could have, you know, maybe been a bit of a better shot. Learn from making uh, whatever five movies is that you can't predict what will connect with people. Uh, and, and meaning that every single time I made a movie, I've tried to predict, oh, this will connect with people and, and none of them have. So uh, it's hard to know well, what it would happen if it came out now. Um, if it's, I think if it's still relevant, it's um, an accomplishment, you know, because the whole thing is, so computer based, so, you know, you know what I mean, like laptop or whatever, desktop mm. based, yeah. and that is so much less part of our daily lives. We're so much less dependent on that than we were, let's say, in two thousand eight when I filmed the movie. Um, that if it still feels relevant, then that itself is an accomplishment. I guess. Yeah, definitely. It really is as a project. It makes me really nostalgic for sort of MySpace days, and I, I think that that's kind of a testament to the artistic style. It works really well to kind of I don't know by being hyper real and you know, hyper linked. It kind of really I don't know connected with me on that level. That it, it doesn't it doesn't date. <laughs> I guess is what I'm trying to get at. Like it still feels pretty relevant. And the themes and stuff really do come through that. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I think part of what we figured out as we went along was that it would help if it actually had like an almost um, catalog, like archaeological quality to it. Like, you know, so like we in post decided to date the movie in 2006, 2007, because we realized it was taking so long. Like iPhones yeah. were like in between us filming it and finishing it, people started getting iPhones. And I was like, fuck, no. Um, <laughs> So we posted it, but then we also started realizing that we were developing all of these different, you know, websites and, and stuff, but also apps and things that apply to different OSs. Like, this is clearly a Windows type thing. This is clearly like a Mac type thing. And so it was our own kind of OS. So I was like, there's a catalog type quality to what we did that. And then, you know, things jumping back in time, like Doom is like an older thing, but you have your fake MySpace. You have your fake Friendster, which is like, yeah, yeah. Um, um, Felix and I are really big fans of Wobble Palace, and we're really keen to see Spree. Yeah, Can you absolutely. tell us a bit about that film and like how it relates to the Zeros and Ones as well? Yeah, Spree is, because uh, so I made Zeros and Ones and I also made this other um, movie in that period called Skydiver, which was all like what we're doing now, which is screen grabs of um, Skype calls on desktops and stuff. And <laughs> Yeah, it's an ongoing project. I'm going to incorporate this. Um, yeah. you know, so, like, after I did those two things, I was like, I need to stay away from screen stuff because it was just so, like, stressful. And I felt like I had exhausted a lot of my um, ideas about it. And then, so I haven't really done anything like that for a long time. And then when I was writing Spree with my partner, um, I was like, 
okay, yeah, this is actually going to be like a live stream movie. Okay. And it's going to be like, we're going to take screen movies and like upgrade them to something that's like not on the computer screen anymore, but on your phone and on, you know, these like dash cams, whatever. So really it is like after taking a break from this formal language, my attempt to try to investigate how that's changed and shifted since the zeros and ones and skydiver days. Um, so it really does really, I also like, I recovered from all of my trauma of like making the movie. So I've come, forgotten it. So I was ready to be like re-traumatized by how grueling it is to, um, you know, replicate the reality of all of these um, apps and programs and mm, like, like a uh, language, you know, it's a super specific language. And if you don't nail it, then you just, it just seems fake right away. And then no one cares. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm Absolutely. Um, Jess has a notebook with yeah, this. Yeah, I do. Scrolls through. Yeah. Well, um, you mentioned Wobble Palace, right? So, like yeah. that movie. So, in the movie before that, Wonderful Cloud, I had um, one of the characters, Kate. She was filming stuff on her phone, and so we just used that footage. And I was like, you know, because people do that, right? Okay. And then in Wobble Palace, I was like, okay, well, how do you like sum up a relationship um, really quick? intro because we came at the end of the relationship so i was like oh you just do it through the, their text history right so yeah. i did that screen grab at the beginning which was the texting between the couple and i really liked that and then i was like okay we're gonna show him on his phone the whole time because he's obsessed with his phone because he's horny and like those are it's like the same thing if you're on your phone you're horny um and so all of those things i kind of felt myself working back into the idea of like investigating the phone so in a way I I take back everything I said. I never really guess got away from that at all. Um, yeah, I, I feel just, like there's a real thematic through line between all of your films, kind of in terms of the way in which I guess young people are engaging with technology, you know, and like yeah, it feels like a very thematically consistent body of work. And I think that kind of speaks out of it. It's yeah. cool that you guys are having this festival. It sounds awesome. I wish I could be there. Um, yeah. It's important to I think investigate the ways that. Um, this sort of language, a sort of communication structure and visual representation structure affects cinema, you know? I mean, if you guys can make some connection, then, then you've done a very good job. Yeah. Um, I feel like your films show a really different side to LA of what we see normally on screen. Like, um, a bit about being an LA filmmaker and what that means to you. So like uh, zeros and ones I made right after I moved to LA. I've lived here for 13 years, I guess. And I still kind of hate it, um, I always kind of have. And um, so I became friends with people who are actually from where like, James Pongo is supposedly from, which is South Bay Torrance. And I was like, this is so weird. It's like, this, it's like these are the suburbs of like LA, but not really because they are LA and like actually what people think of as like Hollywood and downtown LA, those are also weirdly kind of like suburban. There's nothing, there's very little ur urban feeling like neighborhoods in LA. So definitely just wanted, I felt like that sprawl of the city has a, a lot to do with like just the way like our lives are kind of sprawled out in this way, not to make like some huge leap, but I do feel like there's like some connection where it's just easier to stay home and stay on your computer or on your phone than have to schlep like one suburb to like another suburb. And that is like kind of like what that like begrudging odyssey of zeros and ones is it's going from like fucking one stupid person in their stupid little house neighborhood to like another person that he doesn't like in another neighborhood. And that was kind of like, I felt like an accurate depiction of like how I felt about LA and who knew 10 years later, I'd still be living here and complaining still. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, Spree is kind of like that too, in a way, because he's picking people up and dropping them off in their own neighborhoods. And there's commentary about like gentrification and about like, you know, where does the white supremacist guy live and where do like the Hollywood party people like go and all that stuff. So um, the journey continues, the exploration continues. Absolutely. And of course, like huge congratulations on this hour on Spree. That's really incredible um, out of Sundance, which, yeah, big one. That's just a must. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I hope someone in Australia buys it and will come out yeah. there. And I think it's a really exciting 
movie. It's funny and it's, uh, I think, provocative. And I do think it's doing new things with film language. And it's cool that I could get, like, you know, Joe, the lead actor, Joe um, Keery from Stranger Things and, like, Misha Barton and David Arquette. It's nice to um, just work with, like, a big cast that people might recognize and stuff. It's also nice to work with your friends, too, and, like, make movies and, and also work with, like, young actors, like Zeros and Ones, has a lot of young actors. Um, some, I think some of them have had very good careers and some have whatever, it, the struggle continues. Um, but um, it's all good, it's, it's fun. It's, it's a lucky, you know the one thing that I will say about LA that is like really, not, it's not about what's in the movies, but I don't know why I have this hair tie. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, well you have an excuse. Um, I was gonna say, the one great thing about making movies in LA is that there's so many talented people and they work on so much shit, you know, but their talents are they're like, you know, commercials and bad streaming stuff. And like, you know, like Verizon go 90 where they have like $2 billion for three years and they make like horrible crap that no one will ever see. And then all these talented people get paid money. And then if you come at them and you say, I have this idea, like I don't want to revolutionize film language. The whole movie's on a computer screen. They will, like be excited by that and hopefully have enough money that they've saved up working on the things they hate that they can do that with you for a few months and that's really how this movie got made and that's in a way how a lot of the other movies that i've made here got made just really talented people who are you know take high paying jobs that suck and then um i you know am, am lucky enough to encourage them to join me on a uh, very brief but hopefully meaningful adventure you know? yeah totally. um this is kind of on the same topic uh obviously unfriended came out a few years after the zeros and ones and kind of got a bit of cred for changing the language up and everything else what, what do you kind of feel about like unfriended in respect to zeros and ones and that sort of legacy um well it's funny because one of the people who worked really close with me on Zeros and Ones named Russell Sadekpour, he then became the VFX supervisor on Unfriended. Um, and uh, as editor that I worked with, Parker Laramie, on a web series I did, was the editor of Unfriended. So yeah, I right. think there's definitely a connection. I don't know if, like, Timur and, like, the director of that film understand that, but uh, Russell yeah. and Parker, at least, were coming from a place where they very intimately closely knew how like what we were doing and how we were doing it i think ultimately how they did the screen life movies is a little bit is much closer to how i did skydiver where i screen grabbed it and then they did minor modifications on what they screen grabbed as opposed to zeros and ones which is really like a build up from the ground thing with our vfx supervisor andrew schwartz where we, like every scene as you guys is designed animated we did like 50 versions of every scene because like anytime the window moves or like a message comes up it's all about comedic timing you know it's all about kind of guiding where people are looking what is the color for this window and when does it blink because that's where you want people to look so that that was a, I don't know if there's been another screen life movie made like zeros and ones because it's literally an animated film you know and yeah. and, and um, spree is like that too where we're obviously capturing things with phones but we're not all the comments and spree like spree has over uh, 7,000 comments um, original t and all timed out like perfectly to the movie and they're animated they're not like you know screen grabbing twitch or anything like that yeah really yeah any more questions you're all good good yeah yeah, yeah. thanks so much for joining us either where like uh whatever let's see like spree you know let's have a reason to throw spree out there and i'll come out there and we'll all party yeah. out watching everyone who came to the theater if you're watching this you're still here i want to say thank you so much for coming hope you enjoyed the movie and uh you know whatever tell your friends rate it <laughs> still, <laughs> still petty, little, trying to sell this film 10 years later I just make sure you rate it okay. <laughs> um, thanks so much for joining us thanks so much. Okay. Bye. Bye.